In this video, we're going to learn how to find the probability of a single simple event, how to find the probability of events A or B, and apply the complement rule. Then we will look at how to use the general multiplication rule for independent events. First, let's look at finding the probability of a single simple event. Suppose that you roll two dice. As you know, when you roll two dice, your possible sums are between 2 and 12. The first row, for our sum, we have the different possibilities. You can roll 2, a sum of 3, a sum of 4, 5, 6, and so on, all the way up to 12. Below, for our probabilities, we have the probability or likelihood of each outcome occurring. So in other words, if you roll two dice, the probability that you roll a sum of two is one in 36. The probability that you roll a sum of three is two in 36, and so on. Suppose I ask you to find the probability of getting an odd sum when you roll two dice. The general formula for finding probability of a single simple event is the probability of A equals the count of outcomes in A divided by the count of all possible outcomes. We are interested in learning the probability of an odd sum. So that is the probability of rolling a 3 or a 5 or a 7 or a 9 or an 11. In general, OR statements imply that addition is the operation we need to use. So let's look at the probabilities associated with rolling each of these sums. Looking at the corresponding probabilities for each sum, I have 2 36 plus 4 36 plus 6 36 plus 4 36 plus 2 36. Notice that although I could have reduced these fractions, I did not. It's much easier to add fractions that have the same denominator. So any simplification that I'm going to do, I'll do at the very end. The sum of all of my probabilities associated with odd sums turns out to be 18 over 36. That, of course, reduces to 1 half. So the probability of rolling an odd sum, if you roll a pair of dice, is 1 half, or 50%. Suppose we wish to find the probability of events A or B. We're given a table of information that shows various car colors and the probability of each color. For example, let's assume that we're looking at cars on a car lot and the probability distribution of the different colors of cars on the lot is as follows. 25% of the cars are red. 5% of the cars are blue, 25% of the cars are white, 20% of the cars are black, 10% of the cars are silver, and 15% of the cars are another color. Notice the sum of my probabilities adds up to 1. If the sum of your probabilities does not add up to 1, then you do not have a legitimate probability distribution with which to work. Now suppose I ask, what is the probability that a randomly selected car is neither blue nor red? In order to find the answer, we're going to combine two formulas. The formula for the probability of events A or B, and the formula for our complement rule. The probability of seeing a blue car is 5%, and the probability of seeing a red car is 25%. So the probability of A or B, in other words, blue or red, is 5% plus 25%, which gives us 30%. Now, they don't want to know the probability of seeing a red or blue car. They want to know the probability that the car is neither blue nor red. So now we take this information and apply it to our complement rule. 1 minus 
the probability of blue or red. That gives us 1 minus 30 percent, which equals 70 percent. In this example, we'll need to use the general multiplication rule for independent events. A telemarketing agency that sells vacation packages purchases phone lists of potential customers and installs them on its automated dialing system. 20% of the numbers dialed in which a potential customer answers the phone result in a sale. What is the probability that the next three customers dialed do not make a purchase? First, we need to know that the probability of A and B represents the probability of a customer answering the phone and making a purchase. They give us the information we need. They tell us that the probability of a customer answering the phone and buying something is 20%. So the probability of A and B is 20%. However, in this problem, we're not interested in finding out about customers who buy something, we're interested in finding out more about customers who don't. So I'm going to apply my complement rule. First I need to know if the probability of a sale being made is 20 percent, what is the probability that a sale is not made? The formula for the complement rule says the probability of A equals 1 minus the probability of A complement. Because the probability of a sale is 20 percent, the probability of no sale would be 1 minus 20 percent. which gives us 80 percent. So we can think of the probability of A and B and C as being the probability of no sale and no sale and no sale. And statements generally tell us that we need to apply multiplication. So in this case, we would say 0.80 times 0.80 times 0.80. This gives us 0.512, which we could rewrite as 51.2%. We could also be more efficient, and instead of writing 0.80 times 0.80 times 0.80, we could simply write 0.80 raised to the third power, which gives us the same outcome, 0.512 or 51.2%. And of course, any time you want to convert a decimal to a percent, you simply multiply the decimal by 100, or just remember to move that decimal two places to the right. So there are a few examples of finding basic probabilities. In the next video, we'll look a little bit more at the general multiplication rule along with the conditional probability rule.